Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. I got the sound on this time. Thanks, Pastor Darius, for reaching out, texting me, letting me know that was going on. I wouldn't have known till the very end. Um, what you missed in that section where I, I you couldn't hear me was, uh, if you're watching live, was I just, I just gave you the secret to life. Um, you know, the, the one thing you need to do to have make a ton of money, have success in everything you do, it was the, the one secret. And uh, But, hey, I, I was just going to say it once, so sorry, we have to move on from there. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we are here on this Monday on a daily race. So glad to have you here. Uh, love it when kids uh, touch your equipment. So they turned the volume off on my, uh, my little microphone here and didn't know it. So anyways, we are uh, looking at two kings today as we are studying the, the history of the, the kings of Judah and, and the kings of Israel because uh, this is all about the fact that... Uh, God is sending the Savior through this royal line. So uh, how is this moving forward? How is God moving his story forward through flawed people? And today we're going to look at uh, two people that one does really good, one does really bad, and they're related. So what does that look like? First is King Jotham. He succeeds his dad, King Uzziah, who by and large had a great reign, uh, honored God with his life, but at the very end, pride got hold of him. We talked about this yesterday. He entered the temple and he was punished for that. He ended on a bad note. But his son Jotham uh, is characterized as someone who pleased God, who honored God with his reign. In fact, the summary says here, it says King Jotham became powerful because he was careful to live in obedience to the Lord his God. What a great, great summary uh, for a life. So Jotham uh, does what's right in God's eyes. His son takes over and let's read about his son. His son's name is Ahaz. So Ahaz, A-H-A-Z, not Ahab, uh, who was a king of Israel, who was a master prophet of Baal. Um, he was connected, his wife was Jezebel, uh, the whole connection to Elijah and the showdown of Malachi, that was Ahab. We're talking about Ahaz, but what's similar? So they're both bad people and they're both connected to Baal. So that might help you out there a little bit. It says Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. He did not do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that his ancestor David had done. Instead, he followed the example of the king of Israel. He cast metal images for the worship of Baal. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, even sacrificing his own son in the fire. In this way, he followed the detestable practices of the pagan nations of the Lord that the Lord had driven from the land ahead of Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the pagan shrines and on the hills under every garden tree or every green tree. Because of this, the Lord God allowed the king of Aram to defeat Ahaz and exile a large number of people to Damascus. The armies of the king of Israel also defeated Ahaz and inflicted many casualties on his army. As we continue to read through here, Ahaz eventually destroys the temple. He's attacked again by some outside forces and he takes all the golden objects from the temple, the, the worship objects, the instruments, and gives them to this king as, as a tribute to stop the attack. He then breaks down the temple and sets up temples to Baal throughout the whole country. He's, he just goes wheels off, completely opposite to God. How does this happen? From his dad, who followed God righteously his whole life, to his son, the very next generation, going completely the other direction. Now, this is frustrating as a parent, right? You instill things in your kid, uh, you think you're teaching the right way, and then they go a completely different direction. And, you know, this happens sometimes, but statistics tell us that normally kids follow the example of their parents. Uh, that if we honor God with our lives, if we're fully committed, if we have lives of integrity, living in a home, they, in general, follow that pathway. Now, there might be times of rebellion, and there might be a season where they wander away and come back, but this is completely the opposite direction. And... and we don't know all the details from this, but one of the things that's happening behind the scenes in the season that we don't get a chance to see is the influence of uh, the moms in this situation. So kings of Judah, kings of Israel, this is a time period where they have many different wives. And these wives, um, are many of them are selected and given to them by rulers of other countries. Uh, this is a time where you marry for uh, treaties and peace and relationships. So you end up uh, not marrying for love, not marrying for romance, not marrying for a life partner, 
but as someone to make a connection to a foreign kingdom. And that happens a lot here. That happened with Saul. Solomon had hundreds of wives. Um, nowhere in scripture does it say that this ends up going well for these guys. Um, it's, it's never a positive thing. It's a cultural thing that's taking place there. Um, and as we look at this, the, what's most likely happening is that, that Ahaz's mother was from a different culture. And King Jotham, probably the king, didn't spend a lot of time with his kids. He might have honored God with his life, but he's probably not, and I'm making a lot of assumptions here, I get this, probably not taking him out fishing, probably not spending a lot of time with him, probably not, you know, walking side by side. Kids in this system, in this culture, are really raised separately, especially in the royal house, are separately disconnected. And that's kind of a lot why we see this up and down. Even good kings followed by their sons who have not, do not have the same values, do not have the, the same love for the Lord because they were raised really apart from them um, in different cultures and customs. That's why we get this, this whiplash a lot. Now, a lot of times they'll, they'll mention who uh, the kids, um, who each of these, these kids' uh, mother was because that's an important part of it. We don't have this in here. And we don't know that's necessarily what, what took place here. But in all likelihood, it's that, that influence of, of other family members, of, of other people. Um, if we want our kids to, to grow up in the ways of the Lord, then we have to be really intentional about it. Your faith doesn't automatically transfer to the next generation. It doesn't just because you're a, a Christ follower, doesn't make your kids Christ followers. Um, we can influence, we can pour into them, we can have intentional conversations, but at the end of the day, they make their own choices. Uh, they, they choose the pathway that they have. And that's one of the most difficult things as a parent. Pray for our kids, live our lives right, but at the end, they make decisions. And hopefully you don't have something as radical here as, as Ahaz going in the exact opposite direction. Uh, we're going to continue picking it up tomorrow. We're actually going to jump over to the kingdom of Israel again. But this is just a great example of just this polarizing flip between one generation to the next. Once again, we don't know all the details. We just know kind of the, the customs and the culture and the marriage practices during this period of time. And that could have a whole lot to do why you'd see such a flip in such a short period of time. So let's, let's put a pin in it right there. Let's, let's pause and let's get ready for the day. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that we have the opportunity to start our day, to start our week with you. We thank you that you have given us opportunity. And Lord, we just uh, think of for a moment here of just the week you've laid before us. Different things that we know that are, are coming forward, God. We just lift those meetings. Uh, we lift those opportunities to you. God, guide us and direct us in those moments. And God, we think here for a moment of all the times in our calendar that are blank right now, that, that we don't know what's gonna take place. God, we know that there is no empty space in, in our calendar, that you're gonna bring something into our lives. We're gonna use our energy for something during that times. Help us and guide us to, to make the most of that. We love you. We thank you for today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now, right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.